So here we're going to learn about one more cost function, and that's going to be the log cost loss. And this is given by j equals the sum from i equals 1 to the length of our data set. And I'm going to take the log as being the natural log. So that's going to be of the natural log of the cost of yi minus theta transpose xi. And what's so interesting about this is the log cost function itself. If we analyze it, um, let me write down f of x equals the natural log of cosh of x. Then we can observe that for large values of x, this approaches absolute x minus the natural logarithm of 2. And for very small numbers, or just for small numbers, this is almost x squared over 2. And this means if you're dealing with a point that's an outlier, it's just like you're doing least absolute deviations. And if the point is close enough to the straight line, then you're just doing least squares. So let me try to just make sense out of these two by looking at that. Here we have the natural log of the cosh of x, which could be also written as the natural log of e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x over 2. Now if we put x as a very large number then this is going to be 0 and we can break this down as the natural log of e to the power of x minus the natural log of 2 and this is going to give us x. If we put x as a very large number but that is negative this time then this one is going to die this one is going to live, and since it's negative, then this negative is going to cancel out with the negative inside of the x, and you're still going to get x minus the natural log of 2. So in the end, if you're approaching a large number that's positive or negative, then you get absolute x minus the natural log of 2. On the other hand, if the offset is small enough, so x is a small value, then we can say that it converts to x squared over 2. By looking at the Taylor series, the Taylor series of this is x squared over 2 minus x to the power of 4 over 12 plus x to the power of 6 over 45. If x is small enough, then we can just forget about all of these and so on. Now let's go back to minimizing this. And as you can see, it's not going to be so easy to put this in matrix form. In fact, we can if we use a suitable weight, but we don't even have to use weighted least squares in this scenario. And that's because the derivative of the natural log of the cosh of x isn't so bad. So if we have the natural log of the cosh of f of x, then the derivative is simply the hyperbolic tan of f of x multiplied by the derivative of f of x. So here we have partial j over partial theta is going to be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to the length of our data set of the hyperbolic tan of yi minus theta transpose xi multiplied by the derivative of this and the derivative of that is going to be 0 and for this we have negative x transpose. And of course equating this to zero is not going to be so easy, so we're going to have to use some sort of iterative scheme that would make us converge to a solution. Two popular choices are gradient descent, and this works pretty well for this. You can even check that on um, the Mathematic website. And the other choice is Newton's method. And the way that this outclasses both least squares and least absolute deviations is by solving their problems. For least squares, you no longer have to be worried about outliers, because if the offset is large enough, then you're just doing least absolute deviations, and you no longer have that problem of getting um, infinite solutions or having multiple minimizers for your cost function. So, thank you for watching.